this is CJ Darlington from Mountain View Books. Today I want to walk you through the process of uploading your ebook to Nook Press, which is the uh, Barnes & Noble um, interface to upload your ebook. So I'm going to assume that you already have an account with Nook Press, and if you don't, it's a fairly simple process to sign, to sign up. They will ask you for basic information like your, your name, your address, um, probably your social security number, um, banking information, things like that, so they can make sure that you get paid. And you also will need to decide whether you're going to do it under your own name, your author name, or if you want to do it through a make your own little publishing imprint. And some people like to get an LLC for that or, or whatever, but you can just use your name if you decide to do it that way. Um, so I am going to assume, like I said, that you have that account, uh, you've already signed up for that account and that you have an EPUB version of your ebook. Um, that is the format that almost all the sites use except for Amazon, which uses Mobi fi uh, files. So you can't just take your Word document or PDF or something like that and upload it to these sites because a lot of times if you try to do that, you're going to end up with formatting problems and things won't look exactly like you want them to look. So you want to do an EPUB format and you want it to be validated as well if possible. So that's something we do at Mountain View Books if you're looking for that. Uh, we can take your, your manuscript and give you a, a clean EPUB that validates no problems. So. Here we are at the dashboard of the Nook Press, Barnes & Noble site, and what we're going to do is we're going to upload a new book here that I have that I'm uploading. I'm going to walk you through the process. So you, as you can see, you have this little spot here that says Create New Project. So we're going to click on that, and it's going to ask me for the name of the project. And in this case, the name of the product is an ebook, obviously, called What I Wish I... What I wish I knew. What I wish I knew when I bought my first horse. And then I'm going to click on this Create My Project button. And then it's going to bring up another page and it's going to ask me to upload my manuscript file. And it does say that it will accept the, the word formats and text formats. And you can try that, but I don't recommend it because you, like I said, you could have some issues with formatting. So I always use the EPUB file. So I'm going to click on Upload My Manuscript, choose a file to upload, and I have to find it on my computer. Um, let's see here. There's the EPUB, and then I'm going to upload my manuscript file. And it can take a little bit as it's going to process that. So you also need your book cover. Um, okay, it doesn't like that manuscript file name. It needs to be a shorter manuscript file name. So let me just fix that real quickly. Okay, so things like that sometimes do happen when you're uploading and come across a problem that you don't expect. So I went and I shortened the name of my manuscript file. And I put it in a different spot on my computer. So I'm going to go find that now. I don't know what the limit is there on... Barnes & Noble, but apparently what I had was too long. So now we're back to uploading the manuscript. And like I said, you're going to need your cover, and you'll need to have a description of your book uh, uh, available. You'll need to know what, what categories you want to put it in, how much you want to price it at, but we're going to get to that in a second. So as you can see, it takes a couple seconds or so for that to go through. It's importing the manuscript file. It shouldn't have really any problems after that, but you never know. You'll get to see them as we go. But this, the process of uploading an ebook is fairly simple at all of the online retail sites, and Barnes and Noble's Nook Press is, is no different. Um, once you do a number of them, it becomes old hat. But the first time you do it, it can be daunting, so that's why I wanted to make this video for you today, so that you do not have to go through the trial and error that I did. So it's still importing my manuscript file. That's okay. All right. So it's finished with that. And now we're just going to move to the next section, which will be my cover image. Okay. And now, as you can see, um, they accept JPEG files or ping files between five kilobytes and two megabytes. Sometimes I have my 
cover file is too large, so I have to create a, a medium size for Barnes & Noble. But I think we have it right today. And it says that they recommend the height and width be at least 1400 pixels. So pretty much the larger high res photo is what you want um, for your ebook, even though it is not going to be, um, it's not for print, so it doesn't have to be as high of a resolution. It's still, if you can, okay, it's saying that this file is too big, so I'm going to make that one a little smaller too. Um, and be right back. Okay, so I made it a little bit smaller. I usually think I have it small enough and then it's not. So it's going to ask me here. So you have to decide right now whether you want to add your cover image to your manuscript. And I generally say no, because it used to be that people would add, you'd have the cover of the book come up in your ebook reader, and then it would come up again when you got to the manuscript, and it was it was not a necessary thing. So some people pick to do it, some people don't. Um, I am not going to add it. Um, so then it's going to ask me. Then it then it brings up the screen. So I'm going to click upload cover image. And again, it's going to take a little bit for that to upload, <clears throat> depending on your internet speed, which I wish mine was a little bit faster. But you get the feel of the process here. And uh, while we're here, um, you do also want to try to have an idea of what category you're going to want to put your book in. And you want to set the price as well. And that varies. A lot of people have various opinions on what to price their ebook at. I tend to price mine a little lower than, than you would find in a, tradi a traditionally published book. My books are all indie published. For this particular ebook, I'm going to price it at $2.99, but we're going to get to that in a minute. Okay, so it's it says my image has been, had my cover has successfully bleh, successfully been uploaded. So now we're going to move on to the Nook book details. And in this case, we are going to just go down the line here with the title. What I wish I knew when I bought my first horse. I always check that because I believe it pulls that directly from your uh, project title, and that might be different than what your actual book title is. So the publisher's Mountain View Books LLC publication date happens to be today. You can select a future date if your account is able to do pre-orders, which ours is. You have to be approved for that, uh, which wasn't a hard process, but okay. The author name, checking to see that it's mine. And now we're going to go to the actual description, which I already have here. Um, Actually, I don't have it open. I should have. So, horse synopsis too. Um, and I'm just checking one thing here. Okay, so you should probably be a little more prepared than I was there. Um, description. I'm just copying and pasting what I had already written for this. And these are things that you can change at a later date as well. About the author, you can put, um, I don't always put about the author here. Uh, perhaps I should, um, but a lot of, sometimes it comes up anyway. Um, so I'm going to go save it next. I'm going to add that later. Oh, okay. It's asking me if I have an ebook specific ISBN number. I do. Um, you don't have to have an ISBN number to upload an ebook. Um, you do if you have a print book. But in, you don't have to with an ebook, like I said. Um, I generally try to have one anyway because I have a whole list of them that I brought, bought from Valker. I think it's a good idea to have an, an ISBN number if you can. They can get pricey, but you can go to Valker um, and get a, a, a batch of them. So I'm going to select yes, and I'm going to paste in my ISBN number. And then I'm going to go to save and next. And, and you can always change this then before you you finally publish your book and you can also do it at a later date as well. So now what we're going to do is we are going to choose the category for this book. Now this really shouldn't be something you you select willy-nilly. <laughs> you should try to research a little bit here what categories you would like your book to be in. What like what you go online and you look and see what other books are similar to yours and you see uh, what categories those are in and then you go from there. 
So I am going to go to Sports and Recreation. This is a book about horses, so it should have equestrian uh, in here. I, uh, and then it allows you to choose several different categories at your notebook. So you go along down the line and you can kind of see this process as I'm doing it here. Um, I didn't do a lot of research on the categories for this one yet. So I'm just going through crafts and hobbies. I do believe that there's a chance that it may have horses in here. So I just wanted to check that. And so it's sort of the thing that you, you would do. I, I don't think stuffed animals would apply. Um, so I just go down the line. And sometimes it can be a little difficult to find the exact um, key uh, category that you want your book to be in. Pets would be a good one here. I'm going to go to pets and I'm going to go to horses. And it's asking me general or riding. Well, it could be general because it's about it's about horse you know, buying a horse. It's not necessarily about riding. So I'm going to start with general. That's you. You, you don't want to do just general for most of the time. So I'm going to do since it gives me several options. I'm going to do general, and I'm also going to do riding. And it's still giving me more. So I'm going to go down the line and just see what else there is. Um, if you happen to know this ahead of time, it can save you a little bit of time. But sometimes it's fun to just look and see what's out there as well. So I paused the video and found another category, nature, animals, and horses. And at this point, that seems like I, I couldn't seem to find another category for this to go into. Um, so I considered putting it into um, self-help time management, <laughs> since barn time is always... Uh, oh, it's kind of funny, but there, but all right. So now horses. For keywords, it gives you a spot here for keywords for search engines. So I'm going to be general in some of them. And we can put things like, you, these are things you research as well. Um, I did a little of this already. So I'm going to put first horse buying, first horse um, horsemanship. Um, let's see how to buy a horse. Um, first time horse, <laughs> first time horse, that wouldn't work. So horse care, um, think about the things that you would type if you were going to go search for the book that you are uploading. First horse buying, first horse, so as you can see my thought process here with this, how to buy a horse, horse care, um, and you separate each keyword with a comma. And it gives you up to 100 characters, and we're almost there. So I'm just going to leave that for now. And at a later date, I probably will try to, to hone these keywords. And it's going to ask me who my Nook book is most suited for. In this case, I'm going to do general adult. Um, with some of my teen fiction, I will usually put young adult or teens. And then your Nook book is written in English. Let me go to save and next. Now it's going to ask me about my pricing. So I'm going to just do, it only gives me the option of the United States only here. Uh, I do not want to use DRM, Digital Rights Management Encryption. Um, some people do prefer to use it. Um, anymore now, the recommendation is that you not use it for your ebooks because you know, people worry about piracy and people stealing their books, and it's really not something you need to be too concerned about. Um, I think it's more the, the really, I don't know. It's Sometimes people get too worried about that sort of thing, so we're just going to say no, because there's no reason to do it. $2.99 is going to be my list price, and we're going to go to Save and Next. Is my book public domain? No. Is this notebook part of a series? No, not yet. It may be in the future. Is this notebook available in print? In this case, no. Most of my novels are. So at that point, it asks me if there is a um, ISBN number to, specific to the print and how many pages it has. So I'll add that. If, like, if I click yes here, it's going to ask me how many pages are in print. And it probably will ask me for the ISBN number as well. So in this case, it's, I'm going to say no, so I'm going to go to Save and Next. Editorial Reviews. This is where you would put whether or not you have 
like if your book was reviewed in Publishers Weekly or Library Journal or some other recognized place, you would put it here. We don't have that yet for this book, so we're going to leave that blank. Now I can see here that I'm missing something over here because it doesn't have a green check mark. So I'm going to go over here because it's not giving me the option to publish. That's grayed out. So I'm missing something here. So I'll go along and, um, and see what I'm missing. And that's a good indication for you to come uh, contributor. Apparently, I forgot to put my name as my role here. I clicked author. So that's probably why that happened. So I'm going to do save and next. These sort of things happen, and then you just go and you kind of troubleshoot it. As you can see now, there's a check mark beside the title and description. There's a check mark, green check mark beside everything, so it looks like we are good to go. And you can just go back and check each thing to make sure. But I've done this a number of times now, so I'm, I'm pretty confident that I can go ahead and I can change it later. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Publish. And it's asking me to confirm that I have the legal rights necessary to make the content, and I do with the cover data. I mean cover image and things like that, so I'm going to click OK. And now it says that it's processing. So it generally takes a couple days for Nook. Uh, sometimes it can be within a, I think they say it can be within a couple hours, uh, but usually I've found it's a couple days. Um, so now I'm just going to go back to my Nook Press dashboard here, or I guess I'm going to go to our Nook Press projects. So that's all there is uh, to upload to Nook Press. It's, it's very pretty simple, but as you saw, we had a few little hiccups along the way that you got to discover with me. And um, we can you can check your project. You can see what it says. In fact, I'm going to scroll down here so you can see what it says when it's processing. This is what I wish I knew when I bought my first horse. Processing. When it is for sale, you can see that what happens, it has a little symbol here. And then I like, for example, my Thicker Than Blood uh, trilogy, which I had for sale for a little while. I then took it off sale, and I can re-put it on sale if I decided that I wanted to do that. So I hope that little um, tutorial was helpful for you. If you need any ebook formatting done, we do that at mountainviewbooks.com. You could check that out. But I hope it was helpful. This is CJ Darlington from Mountain View Books.